am directing the Department of Justice to implement a plan to stop crime and crimes of violence against law enforcement officers. It's a shame what's been happening to our great, truly great law enforcement officers. That's going to stop as of today. You know, there were many on the left who seized on this today to say that uh, the president has not spoken out for those who have uh, been attacked by police um, and that this is sort of getting it backwards. Uh, I, I don't think my next guest will, will agree with that. He's uh, James Craig. He's the Detroit police chief and the chief is with us right now. What you did doing, you make Neil? of that? Uh, very good to have you, sir. What did you make of that reaction from some on the left that this was tilted toward um, the police and not, and, and not the victims of police, you say? You know, sadly, I'm not surprised. I, I wish I could say, uh, and that's been the problem. You, when you talk about the anti-police rhetoric and you talk about the issues that we've seen over the last couple of years here in America involving our law enforcement officers, law enforcement has been painted with a broad brush. One bad incident or well, one incident is not a bad incident, and uh, law enforcement is corrupt, they're violent, and they're attacking the community. And it is so unfortunate uh, that that's the kind of response. Where's the outcry? You know, you know Neil, I had uh, two officers murdered in the uh, last quarter of last year. And certainly the Detroit community, you know, stepped up and certainly gave a lot of support. Uh, but we need more. Uh, police officers shouldn't go to work wondering whether or not they're going to make it home. There, there's a problem. And so the highest level of leadership needs to step up. And, and certainly I had a chance to listen to President Trump uh, at Major City Chiefs yesterday. He visited with us. Uh, he certainly uh, gave his support to law enforcement and that the madness will stop. This is about creating safe cities, safe communities and neighborhoods. What would it mean going forward, though? The details of this executive order escape me, but I do know that there with him was uh, the new Attorney General, Jeff Sessions, who will have sort of like a 180 degree opposite sort of a pursuit than, than his predecessors in the Obama administration. What do you envision him doing? I know where, where there is sadly, uh, you know, uh, an incident, and they always happen, as you know. Um, we have an opportunity and a choice to either make a national federal case of it or to localize it and look at what happened there. What do you envision? You know, what I think, and, and the shift needs to happen, I think we need to focus on hiring the right police leaders in the various cities. I mean, it's just like any company. If uh, a company is failing, you get rid of the CEO. In this case, you put the right police chief and the right executives in, in the seat to do the job the way it needs to be done. And many of our departments have civilian oversight anyway. How does so, it work in Detroit? I mean, and then how, what do you tell your men and women when it comes to dealing with these incidents? Because it's always either, a, you know, a, a police on, on, on African-American youths or African-Americans, period, or just, you know, law enforcement running amok. And that is the rap you get in the media. Uh, not all media, I should stress, but, but what do you tell your guys? Well, first of all, Detroit Police Department is considered a constitutional police department. And we've gone in and provided the necessary leadership. But what's so critical, when you talk about uh, the support of the men and women who do the job, first, we have to provide unwavering support. And that doesn't translate into dismissive or dismissing errant behavior. You hold folks accountable. You hold their bosses accountable. You hold the police officers accountable. But that's not reflective of an entire police force. And so when you give that unwavering support to those who are doing the job the way they need to do, and then you're transparent with the community that you're serving and protecting, uh, it's an equation that works beautifully. And so I'm excited uh, with the change. I think it's well overdue. I've been in several cities that have been under federal consent judgments, uh, some too long. Uh, but again, the real key is holding police leadership accountable and providing support to the men and women who do the work. Because what we've seen in so many cities, and I can name a few, that when the morale goes down and police officers don't feel supported, certainly violent crime is not being adequately addressed. I've seen it in too many places.
Too many places indeed. Uh, James Craig, thank you. Detroit Police Chief, very good having you again. Thanks. Thanks.